Like it or not, GNOME is the most popular Linux desktop environment out there. Mostly because the two largest Linux distributions out there use GNOME, Ubuntu and Fedora. By default, GNOME kind of has won that race. But usually when something is popular, it has a lot of detractors, and GNOME is no different. I have definitely been one of those detractors over the last two years. I'm not a GNOME guy. I really don't care for their lack of interest in customizing their desktop. They seem to take everything out of their desktop environment that allows their users to customize, or at least that was the case. They're slowly getting better. A few months ago, or at least a few releases ago, they announced that they were switching away from what they used to do, which allowed people to basically theme however they wanted with GNOME tweaks, to a new system called LibAdWaita. And it sparked outrage amongst the racing community because it pretty much killed all of the themes that had been able to be used on GNOME for years. The process of theming pretty much died at that point, or so we thought. See, Libadweta, if I'm saying that right, which I'm probably not, seems to be much more customizable than we ever thought possible. And what I'm going to be showing you today is an application called Gradients. Gradients is a flat pack that you can install via Flathub, and it allows you to customize every single aspect of your GNOME desktop at least in terms of applications. It is amazing. It is like so, so good. So let's go ahead and show you what Gradients will do. And maybe you'll be like me and it will change your mind just a little bit about the direction GNOME is heading in. So here we are in Fedora. Now this is the standard Fedora ISO. And I've done nothing to this other than install Gradients and change the wallpaper. That's all I've done. Oh, I've also installed Flathub, of course, because you're going to need Flathub in order to actually install Gradients. So once you have installed it, all you have to do is either enable Flathub and then install Gradients from the GNOME Software Center. So you would go into S Software and type in Gradients, like so, and then you go here and then you hit Install. That's all you'd have to do. But you obviously have to have Flatpak or flat hub installed in order for that to show up. Once you have it installed, you can open it just by searching for gradients. And this is what you get. Now there will be a small little tour at the beginning that I didn't have a chance to record because I can't get it to show again. But the interface of it is fairly intuitive and the greatest part about this whole thing is that it tells you what colors are going to be applied where. So under each heading, you have a little blurb of text that tells you exactly what these colors are going to be applied to. And as you can see, there is just a ton of settings that you can choose from for each and every little part of the window. So there is a load of different customizations that you can make. Now, the best part about this is twofold. The first is that you can make your theme completely customizable. You can change everything from the button colors to the header colors to the application background and foreground. Every little piece of the application window is customizable here outside of the actual icons themselves. This is just about colors. The second thing that is really cool is that this also comes with the ability to download other people's themes. So if you click this button here which called is called presets you can go to the explore tab under in this window here and you'll see just dozens of different themes that have been, been made by other people that you can automatically apply so for example let's just say you wanted grovebox so we would click this button here and then we would click this button here apply and then if you have the adw gtk3 theme installed which I will leave a link to in the video description. If you have that installed, this will also apply to every GTK3 theme, not just GTK4 theme. So you click this, hit apply, and now when you, let's say you launch the terminal application, you have a Gridbox theme. We can launch another application. Let's go ahead and launch software. You can see that this has a Gridbox theme. That's really cool, right? If at any point in the past before LibAdawaita was here, you themed your GNOME desktop, with a GNOME theme that came from wherever on the internet using GNOME tweaks, you could have done this exact thing, but it was harder. See, that's the thing, is that the reason why this is so impressive to me is that when you used to install a theme, you have to go find the theme, download it, unzip it, put it in the right, right folder, open up GNOME tweaks, 
if you have it installed or you have to install it first and then open GNOME Tweaks, then choose the theme, right? That whole process, well, not necessarily all that difficult, was definitely more steps than opening up gradients, opening up the presets folder, hitting or, or window, and then hitting the explore tab and then downloading the one that you want. This is way, way easier. And the fact that there are just tons of them. So let's just say you wanted Dracula, you could do that. So Dracula, we'll go back to gradients here, hit apply, like so. Make sure that it also applies to GTK3 applications. Again, you have to have that app, that theme installed. Hit apply, and now we have Dracula as a theme. So that's honestly my favorite part. Those presets, the fact that those exist is amazing. Now, you can import your own presets. You, so if you have a preset saved somewhere, you can import that. You can also go to the GitHub page where all of these are found, which is where the Explore tab is pulling from. And you can see what these things look like. So if you, these are just JSON files, so you could, in theory, create your own. You could create your own and then save it somewhere and then transfer from computer to computer, share it with other people. That's also really cool, right? If you go through the process of making your own theme, so you can say, let's just say we wanted to make the header bar a completely different color. So we'll go down here to the header bar colors. We can click on this here. And these are all the presets that you have, but you can obviously do a, any color you want. So we can just, let's make it really bright green. It doesn't really matter. Hit select there. And obviously that's not very appealing, but you could do it. Hit apply. And now every application is going to have that green as the header bar. Now it doesn't change dynamically. So if you want any of this stuff here to come back, you'd have to close it and then reopen it. So we'll reopen Firefox and then you'll see it now has that green header bar that we chose. So it's not quite as dynamic as it might have used to have been, but it's still really nice. The thing is, is that if you go through the process of making your own theme, so you go through the tedious process of choosing the proper colors for every single one of these things that you can change, when you can, let me change the header bar back for, so you can actually see this. If you've gone through and changed all those things that you can change, you can hit the save button, name it, and it will save all of your presets. So it will become your own preset. You could upload it to your own GitHub page. You can change, transfer from computer to computer, different you can save it for later, whatever it happens to be. This is then your theme, right? And that is, again, really cool. So you can actually create your own GTK4 theme using gradients. It's just that neat. And I love that part because I really do have aspirations of making my own theme someday. Now, I'm not sure that I'm very good at designing in order to do that but it's still something that i've always kind of wanted to do and this makes it so easy right the only downside is that this is not going to work outside of gnome so that's kind of disappointing but the fact that this exists is actually really nice another feature that gradients has is this ability called monet and i've not actually been able to get this to work i'm sure i'm doing something wrong but apparently what it will allow you to do is set a background and then it will pull the colors from that background and set a theme to it. So it says it's Monet is an engine that generates a material design three palette from an image's color. So you can find the background image that you want. I don't have anything here and then hit apply and it would then create that palette for you. So that is another thing. So if you're interested in the whole material you thing that Google's been going on about for the last couple of years, this is something that allows you to do that. Honestly, my favorite part is the presets that were created by other people. The fact that this thing exists is really cool, and I expect there to be more presets as this thing becomes more popular. So things like Everforest might show up here, Everblush, things like that. And that's just, it really makes me quite happy that that might exist sometime in the future. So here's like Capucine or however the hell you say it. And uh, here's uh, One Dark Pro if you're interested in One Dark. So you can then apply that. So those presets are my favorite part of this whole thing. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not a GNOME user. And I don't think that this is going to change that. But there was some time while I was playing around with this before I started recording uh, that I was thinking, wow, this could really make me like GNOME. <laughs> like this one aspect just kind of changes everything when it comes to my thoughts on GNOME because GNOME in my mind is the most uncustomizable piece of crap software in the history of Linux. 
That's in my mind. Whether that's fair or not can be argued. I don't know whether or not it is fair because they've obviously been working towards being a little bit more customizable over the last couple versions. So that's obviously changing. But in my mind, that's still the way that I've always just kind of looked at GNOME because they're always pulling out features that allow users to do anything to their desktop environment that doesn't suit the way GNOME and their developers want things to happen. So that's just the picture of GNOME I always have in my mind. With Gradients now and with the ability to choose dark themes and the ability to choose accent colors and all this stuff coming to GNOME, that reputation is slowly going away in my mind and Gradients has changed my mind quite a bit on the customizability of GNOME. Now it really hasn't changed it on the workflow of GNOME. It still doesn't really suit me. I'm a tiling window manager guy and I'm always going to be and while I know you can get tiling in GNOME fairly easily, it's just still not really for me. But it's definitely way better than it used to be and that makes me actually quite happy. So that is Gradients. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the Linuxcast. You can Follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing, amazing people. I can't even begin to say how grateful and thankful I am that you guys support me. So thank you for that. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.